Okay, I want to talk about floats in CSS. Now this is a topic that uh, can seem confusing a little bit to people at first, but uh, it's really not that difficult. I have here a web page with one image inside of the paragraph. Uh, I'm going to copy this image and place it into all three of my paragraphs. There we go. So, copy of the image, all three places. What a float does is it tries to tell the browser how to handle the fact that you've got something sitting inside of a line of text that's bigger than the line of text. How am I supposed to work with this? My image has a height. It's set to 100 pixels right now. And I've got that in my other main.css file. The height of this image is set to 100 pixels. But the line height on each of these lines of text, the line height is not 100 pixels. You can see, looking at this one, that's how big the line height is. It's just 1.5 times this standard font size. The top line, however, is forced to stay open this far because of the image. An image is something that has a display property of inline block. So some properties are like display block, some properties are like display inline. Basically, it means that you can set a height on it, but it's treated like everything else that would be just sitting on the line, like an anchor tag. You wouldn't expect an anchor tag to hold open a line of text like this. The anchor tag would be the same size as the rest of the text. So how do I make this text fill up this space here? How do I make the text wrap around this image? That's where the CSS float property comes in. We're going to tell the browser, take this image and float it to the left. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set some class names. So we'll say the first paragraph is going to have the class 1, the second one is going to have the class 2, third one is going to have the class 3. Now the names aren't important. I could use IDs instead of classes and this would still work. I just want something to differentiate the three of them. So up inside here, something with the class 1 and then image. So this style selector right here says I'm going to style images that are inside of anything that has the class 1. So let's style this image. I will use float left. And as soon as I finish typing that, you can see it did a live preview update. Now my text is all sitting here at the same place as the top of the image. And this is sitting next to the image. And this is next to the image. And this is next to the image. And if I were to add more text inside of here, you can see that it just continues on to the next line. That's what our text is supposed to do. That's what we want it to do. Oh, i got to break it up here, not in the browser. There we are. So my text wraps around this image. If I want to create additional space around my image, what I can do is I can say to the image, okay, uh, we've got this sitting to the left with the text wrapping around it. I'm going to put some margin on the right side of the image. Let's say 3REM creates this big space here. I don't have to make it that large, just, just to demonstrate. And on the bottom, I'm going to add an extra REM. So I've created some extra space around my image. Text is wrapping around that. You'll notice the text reflows nicely. It just says, this is place. I'm not allowed to write the text. It just flows around. OK, so that's floating to the left. Let's do one to the right. So in the paragraph with the class 2, I want to style the image. I'm going to float it to the right. And there we go. Now, I want to show something here. Let's, let's say that this second paragraph didn't have this part of the text. It was a very short paragraph. My image is now taller than this. Well, that means that this image is now sticking down inside of here. If I was to float the third one to the left, you can see the possible values are left, right, or none. 
or inherit means whatever the parent has as a float property is what I will take as well. That's the default. The, um, oh, sorry, the default is none. So right now it's not floating. I'm going to float it to the left. There we are. Now, right here, there's this little chunk that's taken out. There's room for this word to come up here, but not because this image is sticking down inside of here. And this demonstrates how the float property works. When you float something, left or right, the browser says, okay, I'm going to ignore the height property on this image. I'll use it to show how big the image is. I'll make sure that it renders at the right size, but I won't include the height of the image when I calculate the size of any of my paragraphs. I won't include the height when I calculate the height of this paragraph. I won't include the height of this when I calculate the height of this paragraph. So my paragraph is only this tall. If I was to set a background color on this paragraph, so I come in here and set a background color, of gold. There we are. You can see this sticks out now. It's sticking outside of the paragraph. The paragraph, backgrounds, borders, they would ignore the height of this when figuring out how big this paragraph is. So this can stick down inside of whatever comes after it. Now, that may or may not be the effect that you want. I would say most of the time, this is probably not the effect that you want, but there are going to be times where, yeah, okay, that does look good. So how do we get around this? How do we stop it from doing this? How do I make sure that this next line of text doesn't get cut off by anything that sticks down below? And that's where we get the property clear. So I'm going to apply to all my paragraphs. Oh, actually, we'll, we'll start with just number three. The property clear takes both left, none, or right as its possible values. If we said clear left, it means I'm supposed to drop, or the browser's supposed to drop the paragraph with this class below anything that's floated to the left. Well, this guy was floated to the right, so if I do clear left, there's going to be no effect, none. If I change this to clear right, it means it has to move below things that are floated to the right. So it does shift itself down below this. Okay, excellent. So clear right, clear left. Clear right, drop below things floated right. Clear left, drop below things that are floated left. Or both, meaning I don't care if there's something floated right or left above me. If there's anything floated, make sure I don't start until the bottom of whatever was floated. So this is how we get around the fact that we don't know the height or the browser's ignoring the height to do backgrounds. Okay, one last thing. What if I wanted to have this background wrap around here? That is the quick and easy way to do it. If you add the property overflow and set it to auto on whatever the container is. So paragraph two is not being floated, but there's things inside of it that are being floated. If I add overflow auto to the thing that contains it. So this gold background here, the paragraph has something inside that's floated. The container, if it gets set to overflow, overflow auto, then backgrounds and borders will wrap around anything inside of them that has been floated. So that's the one last little piece. If you've got a background, if you didn't have this background, you wouldn't really know. And if I didn't have this overflow auto, let's just comment this out like that. You wouldn't really know. You wouldn't be able to easily tell that this thing was interfering with this paragraph at all here. Um, if I was to take off that clear, like that. So it does, but it's a very little minor interference that it's doing here. Without the background, it's not easy to tell that this is happening. All right, so we'll take the 
comments off there again. And we'll set this back to gold just so we see the difference. All right, so that's what float is. It's putting the property float left or float right, the property float with the value left or right on images or other things inside that you want to have text wrap around. The elements that come after the container, if you don't want them to be interfered with in any way, use clear, both right, left, any of those three values. That will make sure that it drops down below the thing that's floated. And just remember, anything that's floated, the height is being ignored. That's how it does this wrap around. All right. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, hope this helps you and thanks for watching.